Hi friends, this is Laura, aka Lulu Sketches. I am a visual development artist at Paramount Animation. I've been working as an artist in the animation industry for six years now. I have gotten a ton of requests to do portfolio critiques on my YouTube channel for artists who want to work in the animation industry. And guys, I finally got around to it. I asked you guys to submit your portfolio websites over on my Instagram story. Speaking of portfolio websites, today's video is sponsored by Squarespace. Squarespace is what I use for my professional professional art portfolio and I love it. I'm a huge fan. I'll tell you guys more about that in a bit, but right now let's get started on these portfolio critiques. There were a lot more submissions than expected. I randomly selected four portfolios to critique. And also, a side note, my critiques are just one person's opinion. You don't have to agree with me or do what I suggest. And I also recommend getting your portfolio critiqued by multiple artists, not just me. So I'm going to view your portfolios on my laptop here. The first portfolio I'm critiquing is by an artist named Grace Nemanik. Nemanik? I'm sorry if I butchered your names today. So I'm seeing some beautiful painting skills already. My first thought is that I don't know what the focus of this portfolio is. I'm seeing clothing sketches, environment paintings, a dog portrait, fan art, illustration, and graphic design. To get hired in the animation industry, it really helps to show that you're really focused on one aspect of the process. You can have a couple interests, just make sure to separate those categories on your portfolio. Right now, each image I click contains more images. For this portfolio in particular, I'd recommend setting up a portfolio website that's cleaner and easier to navigate. Employers going through portfolio aren't going to spend time clicking each one of these images so they can view more images. Everything needs to be very easy to see from the get-go. It seems that your passion lies in color in painting. So I think you'd make a good color stylist or background painter. I really like how you showed form on this clothing study with your brush strokes. I wish I could see more of that form in those organic brush strokes in your second piece, this architecture painting. It reads very flat and my eye doesn't know where to look. I see way more life in these environment studies. These are beautiful. I really love your use of simplified flat colors on this red house. You have a bunch of other environmental studies grouped together after that, but they're all kind of similar in tone. I would really narrow those down for your portfolio. I really like this piece here. Um, it's an original story. I wish this painting was at the beginning of the portfolio rather than those clothing and environmental studies. I love seeing original designs. With this original piece, I think you can really push the lighting more. You have this super strong light that's very directional. So the rest of the background could really be darkened to make that light pop. I would also try to make this a more interesting composition. Right now, everything is looking similar in size and your character is directly in the center of the piece. You could try using the rule of thirds to make a more visually appealing composition and try playing with the proportions in your piece. I would remove all the fan art from your portfolio because studios like to see that you have your own original ideas. Also, I'd recommend removing the portraits in graphic design. I would make a separate portfolio for illustration and graphic design just because it's so different from animation work. The last couple paintings I wanna go over are these two paintings, this first one is a temple from Avatar The Last Airbender, and this second one is a painting inspired by Breath of the Wild. And I wanna go over these two together because I'm seeing a similar issue in both. There isn't enough tonal range in these paintings, so they appear very flat without any distance. You need more darks and areas of shadow to give these environments form and create contrast in your pieces. Especially during a sunset like this, this foreground would be way darker. Both of these pieces also use very limited palettes. The Avatar one, you're stuck mostly in red hues. For the Breath of the Wild piece, everything looks pretty murky and desaturated, which is totally fine, but this is like during a sunset and you have like light hitting the edges of those rocks, you could really punch that red up. Lastly, about these two pieces, they both have compositions that are very centered and parallel. Really play with shapes and composition. Maybe make these longer horizontal pieces or longer vertical pieces instead of almost square. Don't limit yourself to the dimensions that Instagram wants. Moving on, the second portfolio I'm critiquing is by an artist named 
Lily Trenton. So this is a character design portfolio. I'd recommend drawing your characters in more dynamic poses with reasons for those poses, as well as interactions between the characters. I wanna know why your characters do what they do. They're mostly standing still here, so they seem a little stiff. But just looking at this, I can tell you can draw well, you can totally do more dynamic poses. Another thing, all your characters are very finished, clean designs, but studios looking to hire a character designer really need to see your thought process. So include your original really loose sketches and exploration alongside a few cleaned up ones. Show the process you took from original sketches to get that character to where it is. Also, all of your characters are in color. They're painted or at least shaded a lot tonally. Character designers rarely put tone or color on their work. Your designs really need to stand on their own. So I'd recommend limiting the amount of color in your portfolio. Another thing I noticed is that all of these characters have the same line weight everywhere, the actual thickness of the lines you're drawing with, which makes your characters read very flat. Really play with line weight, like thick and thin lines. A couple artists who do this really well are Shiyun Kim and Mayumi Nose. Those are the first two that came to mind. Having more dynamic line work can really bring life into your characters. Along with that, all of the characters in this portfolio seem to be in one style. I would really show that you can be versatile with styles because you have to adapt to whatever show you're hired on. Along with the one style, all of these characters seem to have similar sizes, shapes, and proportions. You can really push shapes and proportions in your characters, use a variety of shapes, and use those shapes to show who your characters are. Push the proportions of your characters' bodies as well as the proportions of their faces. Ask yourself what a character's shapes and proportions say about their personalities. Lastly, I'm not seeing any character turnarounds. I would include character turnarounds just to show that you can handle the technical side of character design. Just keep pushing your portfolio to look more like a character design portfolio for animation, which requires a lot of storytelling and character acting. Don't be afraid to put messy sketches in your portfolio and just go crazy with shapes. Speaking of portfolios, let's take a quick break to talk about Squarespace, a perfect sponsor for today's video. So there's a couple things I always like to see in a portfolio. It has to be clean and it has to be easy to navigate. Squarespace has the perfect templates for both keeping things clean, organized, and really easy to scroll through, which is very helpful to employers viewing your portfolio. Focus is another major thing I like to see in a portfolio. You can make sure your portfolio stays focused by separating categories into pages. For example, example, if you have a couple interest in animation, such as storyboarding and 2D animation, you can separate those into two separate pages on your Squarespace site. That way, if you're applying for a storyboard position, the employer will know exactly where to look. I've seen longtime industry professionals with Squarespace portfolios who use separate pages for each movie they've worked on, which is impressive as hell. You also have the option to make pages password protected in case there's work you want to show to employers, but you don't want the whole world to see. My personal favorite part of my Squarespace portfolio is the automatic image scaling. My paintings automatically fit together regardless of how I arrange them. I have a discount for you guys to start your own Squarespace portfolios. Head to squarespace.com for a free trial and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Lara Price for 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. And I'll link that down below. Now back to the portfolio reviews. The third portfolio I'm critiquing is Toygen Nisanshi. Okay, starting out, I can already tell that your interest is in environments. I can see design and paint for environments. I love how you're creating distance in your paintings with atmospheric perspective. In this first one here, I can really feel that distance in the way the mountains fade as they move back and how your pine trees lose detail as they become more distant until they're becoming more simple triangle silhouettes. It reads really well. It's something they do a lot in like Gravity Falls. And I love a bold sky, but if the clouds are reflecting a bright pink here, I'd love to see some of that hitting the trees just to make the painting a bit more cohesive. Or if it's really late in the sunset, maybe just the bottoms of the cloud would be lit pink instead of the entire clouds. I'm also wondering what the focal point is in this painting. My eye keeps going right to this saw on the ground. The saw is reflecting a white light instead of any of those sunset colors. Again, it would be kind of nice if that pink color was hitting 
the trees and then also the saw was reflecting it. But mainly I would clarify your focal point because I don't know if that saw was supposed to be the focal point. Okay, next we have a school hallway. I'm really liking the color palette you used in this one. Again, with the sky, it's great to do something bold, but I'd like to see that sky affecting the world around it. If you really wanna keep that bright orange sky, you could darken the interior of the school considerably and really emphasize that orange light and add really long shadows, the kind you see during a sunset. That would be one option. I would also recommend trying some more textured brushes in this one. The shadows here are all done with an airbrush and everything is looking very airbrushy. Your background is a flat, solid style. So I feel like the airbrushing is kind of fighting with that flat style a bit. Another thing I would pay attention to is perspective here. You have a cylindrical fire extinguisher on the wall, which looks like a straight on perspective compared to its rectangular case, which is in perspective. Also the perspective of the flag decorations that are hanging on the ceiling here. Just pay attention to even the little things when dealing with perspective. Since you actually have lines of tiles on the floor and the ceiling, it kind of makes the perspective very obvious. So when things are out of perspective, they kind of stick out more. One more thing I noticed in this painting, the lockers are reflecting on that floor a lot. It shows that the floor is very shiny and reflective. So these fluorescent lights in the ceiling should be creating bright reflections on the floor. Okay, uh, next. In this one, there's a lot going on. I'd really love to have a clear focal point here since there seems to be a lot of contrast everywhere. The background of this painting in the distance is looking really neat. It's very graphic. Um, I think the foreground could use a bit more work. The rocks in this river, for example, some of them look like they're floating in midair. They're not grounded. Also in this piece, I'd love to see a more consistent style. On one side, you have these round trees that were painted with very rough brushes. And then behind those trees, you have similar trees, but they're very painterly. And then the river and the surrounding ground is very airbrushed and soft. And it's the only place lacking in any detail. And then on top of this airbrush river, you have very sharp lassoed rocks. And then in the left foreground, it's looking very sharp and there's a ton of detail. So all the different parts of this painting don't really look like they belong in the same world. I think choosing your focal point for this piece would also help with that. Next, you have some animation work as well as a couple pieces of character design. They look out of place in this portfolio. So I just take out the couple pieces of character design and this short animated video. That would make this a more focused portfolio. Okay, last portfolio I'm critiquing is by an artist named Aisha Lin. So you have a bunch of pretty background paintings. So I'm thinking you're a background painter. And then you have some black and white background designs in here too. Seems you're into background painting as well as maybe background design. Okay, there's a category for visual development and it has backgrounds, character design, and prop design. I would separate visual development from character design in a portfolio because those are two separate job titles. Also, if your backgrounds are part of the visual development category, visual development is more for feature animation and background painting these days only exists in 2D productions like television shows. Also with all the categories, there's too much clicking I have to do to see all of your artwork. Your prop design category only has two images in it, so that's not even really enough to have its own category. I'm gonna focus on the environments since that's the majority of your portfolio, so it seems to be where your passion lies. This first painting, I absolutely love this color palette. That bright red against those muted brown tones is gorgeous. I do want there to be some detail on the building. I want more storytelling in this scene. Right now, I can't tell if the building is a church or a school. It looks immaculate compared to the surrounding ground, so maybe it's freshly painted. Just make sure you have all these things figured out about your story and really show the viewer the story. Okay, once I zoomed in, I actually noticed that there is super motion blurred foliage in the foreground. So I'm wondering if as the viewer, I'm viewing this building from something moving like a train. It would be great 
if that were more obvious why the foreground is motion blurred because right now I'm not sure if that moving train feel was intentional. If it was intentional, you could make the viewer further away so you could see maybe a guardrail along the edge of a road or a second set of train tracks to show that there's a train passing there that kind of thing. I also want to know why storytelling wise, the viewer would be in motion. Or maybe this was meant to be a regular lens blur, in which case I'd recommend more of a Gaussian blur effect rather than a motion blur. Also, I shouldn't have to zoom in so much to see these blurred foreground details. Make sure to make elements like this obvious, even from a small thumbnail, you should be able to see those elements. One thing I noticed in your portfolio is that most of the environments are from very similar distances distances. The subjects are at similar distances from the viewer. I would love to see some truly epic compositions where the focal point is tiny and miles away from the viewer. I think that would diversify your environments a little bit. I like how you did this one background in two different seasons. I think the sunny version is more successful because I really love the atmospheric perspective. I'd love to see even more, like really push back those purple plants in the background. In the winter shot, these purple plants are so saturated that they're not looking so far away anymore. I would really push them back in that winter shot, even more so than the sunny shot because the sky you have here is kind of a winter fog. So you can really push those elements back into that fog. For this traveler piece, I really like how you included thumbnails. It looks like you ended up doing colors that are different from the color rough. So it kind of seems like you didn't explore color enough beforehand. So next time I'd recommend doing multiple color roughs until you find the palette you like. I really liked what you were doing with the initial thumbnails, that dark framing around the whole piece. I would have loved to see that in the final, especially with that bright light peeking through at the top. That could have been really nice too and created more distance in your painting. And maybe you could use the rule of thirds to create a more interesting composition for this. Right now the character is just right in the center. I do like how you have the character over the bright water because it really draws the eye to the silhouette of the donkey and the man. Next. This isometric view of an interior is really cool. I just wish it were bigger. I think it would be an amazing addition to your portfolio if you could do an entire large isometric room because this one right now isn't showing me much. Okay, last one I'll go over. This graphic piece, I really love that you showed that you can do a really geometric style and the palette is beautiful. I think you can push back those mountains on the horizon even more, really push them into that purple sky color. But overall, this reads really well. My eye goes straight to that tree and then I take this pathway and I see this village up on the hill. I just think this one is fun and definitely a style I could see for a background painting for an animated TV show. And that's all the portfolio reviews for today. I'm sorry if your portfolio wasn't chosen, there were a lot of submissions, but I can do another one of these videos and review even more portfolios. If that's something you guys wanna see, just let me know in the comments down below and make sure to give this video a thumbs up. Thank you guys for watching and make sure to subscribe for more videos. Bye.